In this video, we will understand the complete basics on CMOS inverter. But first, what is the full form of this CMOS? C stands for complementary, M stands for metal, O stands for oxide and S stands for semiconductor. And also the term inverter. What is this? You have studied the basics like the basic gates, the logic gates. We have the NOT gate, correct? And what is the operation of the NOT gate? If you provide the input as 1, you are getting the output as 0. Similarly, if you are providing the input as 0 volt, you are getting the output as logic 1 or VCC. So this gate is basically the inverter. It is acting as the inverter because it is doing the inversion between input and output. Correct. So this is the inverter, but we have done the inverter using the basic gate. Now we have to perform the inverter or inversion operation using the CMOS. But first we will study how many types of CMOS we have. In total, we have two types of MOSFET. One is the N-type and other is the P-type. Now N-type is simple because the drain current flows from drain to source in the N-type. In the P-type, the drain current flows from source to drain. So these are the two types you can differentiate very easily by just looking at the flow of the current. Simple. So this is the basic difference. But when I talk about the competitive examination, the gate examination, you should know the varieties of symbols of NMOS and PMOS. So now we will study about that. The first symbol we have is the basic symbol. You can see the three terminals, gate, drain and source and the respective voltages we have is plus minus VGS. Here we have plus minus VDS and the current flowing here is drain current. So the drain current is here are uh, flowing from drain to source and also we have the IG this current the value of this current is equal to zero volt. Also we have this space in between these two plates and this there is no virtual channel. Okay, there is no physical channel, but there is a virtual channel. When this MOSFET is on, there is a virtual channel. It is connected virtually. Okay, so this was the basic you should know about the NMOS, and that's it. This was the uh, you can say one of the symbol where this uh, plate size, plate size, not same, but we have one more type where the plate sizes are same. So this is the type 3. Also, sometimes in the word problems, they mention this symbol, the three terminals, gate, drain and source, but they do not give you the arrow. The arrow present here, the arrow is also present here. This basically meant that our current is flowing from drain to source. But sometimes the symbol is like this where the arrow is not present. So what you can think of is about the line mentioned in the question they will give you that the current is flowing from drain to source this means that they are talking about the NMOS so what you have to do in this cases you have to check the question because in the question they will give you the hint so the fourth type we have is again the same where plate sizes are same you can see here the space here is uh, empty this is the empty space but when this MOSFET is on we get the virtual channel so these are the basics you should know and again if uh, the question says that the current flows from drain to source then this is the symbol the fifth symbol we have is single plate single plate and this is the symbol very, very simple uh, we have the three terminals drain gate drain and source and this arrow is present this means that our current is flowing from drain to source the sixth symbol is very important please take a special care while dealing with this six symbol because in this symbol we have one more term that is the bulk. Now if the symbol if the arrow is like this this means they are talking about the NMOS but what if it was opposite if it was opposite it was the PMOS and this type of MOSFET has a special name known as the enhancement type of MOSFET. So these are the varieties of symbols you should know if you are preparing for the gate examination and if you tell me, tell me the difference between the PMOS, you can say the current is only the difference. Here you can see in the first case we have the three terminals gate, source and drain and the current is flowing from source to drain. So this is the symbol where you can see the current is flowing from source to drain. And the second symbol is a special symbol here because bubble is present. Whenever you see this bubble, this means they are giving us the PMOS. So this was the basics about the PMOS and NMOS. And uh, if the bulk has the opposite sign, it is also known as the PMOS. Okay. And the bubble is the very important case. In this slide, we will see how our NMOS and PMOS behaves as the short circuit 
and the open circuit so what are the logics and uh, what is the criteria to behave as the short circuit and the open circuit so now we will see the first case and the first symbol that is the nmos you can see the nmos because the arrow is present the current is flowing from drain to source and uh, we have the three terminals gate drain and source so this is the nmos and we have the input at the gate side and we uh, this this mosfet will behave as the short circuit or it can behave as the open circuit but what are the cases this is the question we are trying to find the answer for that so this is the ideal condition in the practical condition we will see in the later slide what will happen if we are dealing with the practical conditions so what you have to do if you are you are making your input as one for the nmos then this transistor because the nmos basically means the mosfet which is a transistor so if a is one then transistor behaves as the closed switch now this is short circuit or closed switch you can say and if it is zero then it it will behave as the open circuit so this is the case for the nmos but what about pmos we have the same thing but bubble is present this clearly means we are talking about the pmos so here the logic is opposite if my a is zero then my transistor will behave as the closed switch this means this would change to closed switch but what if my a is one then it is the open switch so this was the ideal condition and ideal working of nmos and pmos now we will see the working of cmos inverter in this slide we will see the working of cmos inverter it is pretty simple if you know your logics pmos logic and nmos logic so at the upper side we have the pmos bubble is present at the lower side we have the nmos now respective voltages and current would be present the current flowing is id the voltage here because we have the gate source drain gate drain source correct so the voltage here is plus minus vsg of pmos here we have plus minus vgs for nmos similarly here we have plus minus vd vsd of pmos and here we have plus minus vds of nmos so the four voltages you should know because when we study about the transfer characteristics this would be helpful so this was the basic idea of the configuration and the circuit but the logical part is the input are shorted the gate side is this for the pmos and the gate side for this is of nmos so this are shorted and we are providing the common input similarly we are getting the common output from this side as you can see i'm just making the things dark so that it is visible to you so common input here and we are getting the common output so when my input is zero i am getting zero at the upper side and also at the lower side for the nmos if my input is zero at this side if i am providing zero volt then this nmos would be off and if i providing zero volt for the pmos at the gate side it is on it will behave as the short circuit or closed switch and you can see that the output is now vcc so when you provide the input as 0 you are getting the output as 1 or vcc 1 means you are giving the answer as logic 1 the meaning is same you should know the difference now my question is if i provide the input as 1 what will happen you should try by yourself and check whether you are getting the output as 0 okay so this was all about the cmos inverter working now we will see the input characteristics and output characteristics so in this slide we will understand the input characteristics first and then we will understand the output characteristics but before going to that we are dealing with the nmos these are the characteristics of nmos so let us draw nmos first we have this gate side then we have the drain and the source so this is the drain and this is the source we have the two voltages this is the input voltage which is the vgs correct because the last terminal was of source so the input side is vgs the output side is vds the current flowing here is id so this three terms vgs vds and id you should be familiar with because all your graph would depend on this three terms so when i talk about the input characteristics my y axis is the current that is the drain current and the x axis is the input voltage which is vgs now if my input voltage that is if my vgs is greater than vtn then my mosfet is on because ideally you have studied if you provide this gate terminal with one logic one then your nmos is on correct and if you provide it with zero your nmos is off but practically you should give your input greater than vtn now this what what does vtn uh, means what is the full form it is the threshold 
it is the threshold of the nmos if you provide your voltage greater than this threshold then you can see your current will increase as you increase your input voltage your current will increase so this was the input characteristics where you have understood if your input is less than the threshold voltage you, you won't get any current your id is zero but when you give your input greater than vtn you can see the gradual increase in the id so now we will study about the output characteristics now in the output characteristics we have the three region first is the cutoff region second is the linear region and third is the saturation region now in this three regions something special is there i want to make sure i give all the important point regarding this three region let us start with the cutoff region first so this is our first region cutoff region now when your vds is less than the zero volt you can say when your vds is negative when your vds is negative you are in the cutoff region where your drain current is equal to zero no current is flowing in the mosfet now this happens when your input voltage is less than vtn as well so this is uh, when your vds is less than zero or you can say your vds is negative your drain current is zero then we have the linear region the region we we are familiar with and the region we always need the linear region now this is the linear region where your vds is uh, positive and your vds is also less than vgs minus vtn then then the region is known as the linear region now vgs minus vtn is also known as the driver voltage which is represented as vov which is known as the driver voltage now one more point i want to make sure what if your vds is equal to the driver voltage your vds is equal to the driver voltage and also your vds is greater than driver voltage so what will happen in this cases in this case your mosfet is in saturation region this means your mosfet will have the straight line as your output the maximum maximum current id it won't be affected if you if you are changing your voltage now it won't affect the output because now your output now your mosfet is in saturation it will provide you the maximum current so this is the saturation region and i hope you got all the three regions linear region cutoff region saturation region now if you want the equation of the current that is the drain current and everything in depth you have you should watch my next video because i will make sure i will cover this for nmos and pmos as well so that there is no confusion and no doubt so friends agar aapko meri video pasand aa rahi ho then do like this video share with your friends and subscribe to my youtube channel तो मिलते हैं अगली वीडियो में टिल देन टेक केयर दिस इज ट्रेनिंग जैन पीस आउट